and to meet one another in that moment of encounter and found himself transformed. And then he found that he could no longer live the same way. Mercy changed his life as much as it, as it relieved the suffering of the, of the lepers in his midst. And so we must show mercy to those whom we like the least, whether in our family or in the thoughts that we project into the world towards political leaders. I know this is a total order, but show mercy to those whom we fear are ruining our nation and our community. Mercy toward those who have done us terrible, terrible, terrible wrongs because of their reinforcement of structures of racism, sexism, heterosexism. We, we have more than ever to find the, 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 the resources within us to regard those who are a threat to us, a legitimate existential threat to us, to show mercy even to them. Francis, by talking about mercy, is merely restating what it says in the Beatitudes that we must love our enemy. Uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, to show, to show more love to our enemies than even to our friends. And that's the, the purpose of the letter to the minister. Um, Francis was um, uh, preaching a message of forbearance, patience. And that's how we break the cycle of violence, how we break the cycle of um, uh, escalation of, of rivalries and conflicts. Um, when we show mercy to our enemies, this draws them to God, where we hold the hope of an eventual reconciliation, breaking the cycle of retaliation, breaking the cycle of violence. No mercy, no peace. Okay, a few more rules. Peace does not change anything except ourselves. Peace, we don't use peace as cudgel or a weapon to change others. Rather, we seek to be peace and peace is the change that, un that we undergo. This is why Francis admonishes the minister of, of the fraternity not to wish for his enemy brother to be a better Christian or to stop treating him unfairly. The reason Francis says this is not because the other person doesn't need to change. To the contrary, the problem is when we start wishing for other people to change, rather than concentrating on the conversion and change we need to undergo, we will find ourselves scheming to rationalize our bad behavior and our negative attitudes. And before we know it, we find ourselves scheming to chastise and punish uh, others and to uh, seek payback uh, against them. So Francis, being a worldly person, reminds the brother minister, do not wish anything different from them because they won't change if we don't change. And so he puts the onus back on ourselves. Accept the circumstance with, magnan with the magnanimity of God, with forbearance, to let go of our desire to change by force, okay? Change is necessary, but Francis wants us not to change other people forcibly, but rather through revolutionary, nonviolent love of the other. Peace doesn't change anything. Peace is the change within ourselves when we surrender to and, 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 and adopt a posture of revolutionary, nonviolent love of the other. Okay, two more rules, and then we'll go to our breakout groups. Peace comes without victory. Peace is not the fruit of our conquest of, of others and even of ourselves, as if we could make our, ourselves over by our own will. Francis knew that we have divided hearts. And so he renounced his own desires to climb the social ladder of, of, of society in Assisi. He knew that he had a covetous heart and that he wanted to become the authority of everybody. So he chose to get off of the ladder altogether, not just climb down the social ladder to become the least of all brothers, but he got off the ladder altogether. He became a lesser brother, friar minor, and he abandoned his quest to become a knight um, nobility. He accepted his lowliness, he accepted his failure, he accepted his defeats, he accepted his thwarted plans, and he offered to God his endurance and his willingness to pardon others in the process. The one verse that we uh, highlighted from the Canticle of the Creatures, which was his praise of and universal kinship of all creatures before he died, said, uh, praise to you, be to you, my Lord, who, who bear infirmity and tribulation for your love. Um, we're called 
not to be conquerors of other people's souls. We are called to be patient in suffering and to be companions on the way. It's said that when Francis of Assisi um, had this song, the Canticle of the Creatures, sung in a town square a few months before he died, um, the Bishop of Assisi and the mayor of, of Assisi, who had been feuding with each other, the bishop excommunicated the mayor, and the mayor had put an interdict on all of the bishop's economic affairs. They had reconciled to each other just by singing a song of peace and a call for people to renounce their claims over each other. Francis is, is, is not saying abandon our claims for justice, but hold on to them more loosely. Peace comes without victory. Peace comes when we surrender to the pacific will of God who never, ever, ever uses violence or force to bring us into harmony and reconciliation with one another. Never. There is not a trace of violence in God. If I make anything clear in this presentation is that Francis was converted to an image of a God who was not a warrior, not a uh, conquistador, not a autocrat, not an emperor, not an imperial being, but rather someone who in the form of Jesus humbled himself and took the form of a humble human being. Final rule, peace begins with us. Peace begins with us truly being ourselves. Francis constantly asked God, who are you and who am I? Who are you and who am I? The prayer before the crucifix in San Damiano, a broken down chapel in Assisi, we heard um, in the song in Perfect Charity, most high glorious God, enlighten the darkness of my heart and give me true faith, certain hope and perfect charity with sense and knowledge that I may carry out your holy and true command. This is a cry from Francis's soul, his broken, wounded soul, to be made who God wanted him to be. Uh, not who we think we want to be, um, and not what others want us to be. Francis, once he was converted to a God-centered life, stopped letting himself imitate all the other hero figures in his world. He didn't want to become a St. George slaying the dragon. He didn't want to become um, a Count Walter of Brienne, who was a famous crusader, um, whose army he sought to join um, in his youth. Uh, he wasn't called to be a troubadour, you know, of love, singing songs uh, uh, across the French and Italian countryside, wooing all the women in the world. Um, he was converted to be a little brother, the least of all and the servant of all. So if peace is to begin with us, it has to begin with us being truly who we are and to learn to imitate the peaceful example of a figure like Jesus, whose gospel showed Francis how futile it was to imitate the false desires of other people in the world. So just to recapitulate, um, peace comes from penance. With no mercy, there's no peace. Peace does not change anything except ourselves. Peace comes without victory, and peace begins with us being truly ourselves. And th these are just a few of the thoughts I wanted to share with you this morning and to take into our, our discussion groups. And whichever breakout group I'm in, I'm happy to share more details about the biography of Francis of Assisi following the service for the coffee hour. I can, I can stay for Q&A um, to fill in more of the biographical gaps. And I wish you, in the spirit of Francis of Assisi, peace, and all good things. Amen.